All right, so let's go ahead and erase this. So the magnitude of a vector is denoted with these two bars like this. And, um, you know, this is our plane in R2. Geometrically, it's simply the length of this vector. Um, so we have this vector uh, v that lives in Rn is equal to the square root of the square of its comp the sum of the squares of its components. And this is um, easy to see true in um, R2. So if this is the value for v1, this is the value for v2, well, this is simply um, the Pythagorean theorem um, applied to vectors. So we have v1 squared plus v2 squared um, is equal, take the square root of that, that's equal to the length of this v, which would be the hypotenuse in our geometric example. And <clears throat> you can see the same thing is true for R3. You can apply the Pythagorean theorem into three-dimensional space. Um, so you would have the three components x, y, and z. And um, apologize for my poor drawing, but um, go ahead and check it out and make sure it works for yourself. Okay, so along with these examples comes um, three other propositions. So the first one is pretty easy to see. Um, the magnitude of a vector is greater than or equal to zero. So you cannot have negative lengths in geometry. Similarly, you can't have negative magnitudes for vectors. This is for all vectors. Um, the magnitude of a vector is zero if and only if. So this um, is only the case if the um, vector is the zero vector. And if and only if means um, that um, Similarly, um, if the, the magnitude of a zero vector is also zero. And finally, we have the magnitude of a vector v. Um, if we increase that by a scalar multiple, let's say, say our uh, c is 3 in this case, so this is 3v, then the magnitude also increases by the absolute value of c. Okay, um, show a few more interesting results that arise from our basic definitions. First, let's look at the triangle inequality, and you may be familiar with this from geometry, but this is just um, the vector um, analogy. So. If we have two vectors, v and w, uh, we take the magnitudes of that. That is going to be less than or equal to the vector of v plus the magnitude of the vector w. So geometrically, say we have this is v, this is w, and recall from vector addition, this would be v plus w. Um, two sides of a triangle can never be greater um, the sum of the two sides of this triangle are always greater than the third side. So we would have something um, like where it would reach equality if we have one of these uh, vectors as the zero vector. Okay. Next proposition you can derive actually from the law of cosines. I'm just going to write it here. So the dot product of v and w is equal to the product of the magnitudes of the vectors times um, cosine theta, where the theta is the angle, the smallest angle that lies between the two vectors. So something like this, um, if this was v and this was w. And from this, we can um, sort of derive the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality states that the absolute value of the dot product of v and w is less than or equal to 
the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. And we see that this makes sense because from this here, cosine theta is always between 1 and negative 1. So we see that the magnitude of this will be greatest when cosine is 1. And we have the absolute values here because um, you know, cosine theta can take on negative values. But we're only interested in the sheer magnitude of this. Okay, uh, finally, to wrap things up, we're going to explore um, some properties of vectors when they are orthogonal. So if a vector v and a vector w have a dot product of 0, then they are orthogonal. And what orthogonal, um, you may have heard this in the geometric um, concept that it is um, the same as perpendicular. That is almost the case here, except um, we can get for um, any vector dotted with the zero vector, that's equal to zero, and so we um, say that this special case is also orthogonal. But if v and w are not equal to the zero vector, and v dotted with w um, is equal to zero, then they are perpendicular. And so if you were to um, graph them, if they were in R2 or R3, then you would see that they form a 90 degree angle. Last thing is pretty much like the Pythagorean theorem. I think that's how you spell it. Okay. Um, so again, we have vectors v and w. And this may seem kind of analogous. And you can, we'll go ahead and graph this so we can see why this is the same as c squared. So again, we have v here, w, v plus w. Um, we have the square of v plus the square of w is, sorry, this does not look like a very good right triangle. Um, so the square of v plus the square of w is equal to the square of v plus w squared. So at least conceptually, this is why this is true.